Welcome everyone back to Creekcast Void once again with a marvelous guest. Uh, we're so happy to have you here. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Matt Mickelson, um, and I'm currently sitting in northern Minnesota of all places, which is pretty much as close as you can get to Canada without being in Canada here in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> great. So, can you tell uh, our dear listeners? What do you do for a living? I do a lot of stuff for a living. <laughs> um, primarily, um, I work with sound. Um, I'm a sound designer um, for like film and television and video games. Um, I also am a filmmaker. Um, I make films mostly like environmental documentaries, films about uh, conservation and inclusion. Um, and I also work as a soundscape ecologist. Uh, so I study uh, sound and how it impacts environments, how it impacts people, animals, birds. Um, and yeah, I mean, do, lo do lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool guy. <laughs> I think so, but I'm biased. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess the first question that comes to mind uh, well, it, it came to mind when I saw uh, like a video of Quiet Parks International is what exactly a uh, sound ecologist does. Like I, I had never heard of that before. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting field. Um, it's not super old. Uh, it's like relatively new as far as like scientific fields of study go. Yeah. Um, but basically, I mean, this might get like really meta, but um, sound is such a big part of how we move through our environment. Um, and not just how we as humans do, but how animals do, how birds do. Um, and the environment, the sonic environment that we move through has a big impact on how we move, the decisions we make, um, everything from like how stressed out we are to um, where we might decide to walk and um, how birds decide to nest, like all these things are decisions that we make using our ears. Um, your ears are like arguably your most powerful sense. I mean, your ears are sending massive amounts of information to your brain at all times, much more than your eyes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so soundscape ecology and, and acoustic ecology in general is just trying to figure out how sound impacts the way that we move or anyone, anything moves um, in the world. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty crazy pretty quick, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's so interesting. I uh, first got into listening through music. Like, I'm a musician. Um, when I was the tender age of, like, 15 and 16, I wanted to be a rock star in a band. I'm a drummer. And that's like, that was my first real passion in life was drumming. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because now I spend a lot of time being quiet. But um, <laughs> yeah, listening is like, that's how listening became such a big part of my life. It's just like listening to music, listening to uh, going to shows, playing shows. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I'm sure you might have more questions about that. But yeah, listening <laughs> is such a big part of how um, how I've always lived my life. Um, and I think I kind of realized at some point that we all could use our ears more as humans. We have these amazing, powerful tools strapped to the side of our heads that are always receiving information, even when we're sleeping, even when our eyes are closed. Um, our ears are always sending information to us. Yeah. Um, I think that's super cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, when you put it that way, ears and sound is like, pretty crazy pretty big yeah pretty i mean like i'm oh, sorry what were you gonna yeah, say yeah pre pretty underlooked like people yeah. don't yeah. really appreciate the ears as much like I, I i was thinking like you can shut your eyes out like not see anything for a while but sound i mean you can t shut your ears out you're hearing everything 24 7 whether you like it or not totally yeah, yeah it's like how do you wake up in the morning it's with an alarm clock you know yeah. and like your brain is always deciphering information that's coming to you through your ears as you sleep. So as soon as you hear that buzzing in the morning, it like wakes your body up. It's time to get on with the, the day. Um, or like fire alarms, like fire alarms for a long time just had sound. 
Um, now when we see fire alarms, there's flashing lights as well for people who aren't hearing. But it's really interesting to think all the things that we use in our world that are just sound triggers. Yeah. Um, that's because sound is also like, I can close my eyes and if someone opened the door behind me, I'd be able to tell exactly where they were in the room. Even if they're not speaking, you you can sense sound 360 degrees at all times. Yeah. Um, similarly, like my backyard, I have woods in my backyard, but I can hear individual cars moving on the other side of the hill. So I can't see the road, but I know, okay, that's a car. Yeah. Furthermore, I can tell you, is it a truck? Is it a car? Is it a motorcycle? Um, like there's so much information to unpack all the time, yeah. but we're a really visual, visually dominant society for the most part, like in, in a lot of the world, a lot of parts of the world. Yeah. Um, so hearing does get underlooked, but it's a super, super powerful sense. Yeah. I mean, mainly on entertainment, I, I guess is because sound or at least sound design when done well, people don't notice like at all. I mean, that's the point. If people notice, like, uh, it's because it doesn't sound quite right. So, I don't know. I, I am a big uh, film and just in the whole entertainment kind of business. And gamer. Yeah, and big time gamer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really appreciate uh, the sound design that comes to stuff uh, when I actively try to listen. Because it's yeah. the small things. Because w when someone's walking in a movie, uh, you don't like consciously think, oh, that walking sounds pretty dope. Yeah. But it's w w <laughs> when it doesn't quite fit, that's when like, ah, oh, that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. feel right. So totally. it, it's under so few people. Yeah, so few people realize like most of the sounds you hear in movies, all the sounds you hear in video games, um, all that stuff is laid in after the fact. Like yeah. even the voices of the people often are recorded in a studio afterwards and then synced up. So it's like, sound designers for a long time have been like almost considered bottom of the totem pole even though the work that we do is like super intellectual and really yeah. difficult um but you're right if it's done well people aren't really consciously aware of it mm -hmm. um but i will say recently like a lot of the newer films and tv shows that are coming out there's like more attention yeah. paid to the sound design like people are kind of diving in more to that and um making it more of like a recognizable kind of style or, or um, you know, a piece of the art, which it really always has been. Yeah. Um, but now we're kind of really diving into that. Yeah, I think part of it is also like, um, we, we literally just talked for one uh, bit size completely about Dune and just like how immersive the sound <laughs> was on that film. And I feel like also when you go to the, like the movie theaters to watch a movie, you you do appreciate the sound more and i think it's easier for people to appreciate sound then than just like in normal activity where your ears are also kind of focusing on other things um which is i guess noise pollution in and of itself totally and i mean like you uh, a lot of us like when we watch tv or movies at home it's like either on our laptops through laptop speakers or like the tvs that we have for the most part don't have great speakers yeah but when you're like if you plug in headphones to your TV or like if you're gaming and you put on headphones, all of a sudden you realize like, whoa, like someone spends yeah. so much time thinking about what's happening right now. It's so, so cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I, same thing happens to me when I'm like watching TV. I just put it on and like oftentimes I don't even think about sound yeah. um, and I'm a sound person. So <laughs> <laughs> we all it happens to all of us for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that, that kind of brings me on to the next point, um, which is in nature. Uh, a lot of the time, like, I, I feel like as time goes on with, you know, everything beautiful that's going on in the world, uh, natural kind of like, I guess, virgin landscapes are becoming more rare. Uh, and I mean, that being part of what you do, it brings a question like how difficult is it to first of all find a place that doesn't have noise pollution and how different uh ecosystem or an environment can look when there is noise pollution that's such a great question um yeah it's um becoming harder and harder to find natural places that are like free from human influence yeah 
Um, I'd argue there's actually probably none left. There are big swaths of land still that have some, but even in like the North Pole and the South Pole, there's research stations, there's airplanes that fly over. Even though there's not a lot of humans, the evidence of, of our existence is still there, yeah. which isn't blanketly bad. You know, like I think it's easy to become catastrophic with that thought. Um, but I, you know, I don't think that's inherently bad. Um, what I think we're realizing is that uh, we need to have places that are completely off limits to not only noise pollution, but all types of pollution. Yeah. Um, and that's like the whole conservation movement, you know, that was started thousands of years ago by lots of indigenous people and then, you know, has gone through many different iterations, um, many different governments, nonprofits. Everyone talks about conservation. Um, the idea behind conservation is saving resources, yeah. uh, saving resources for, you know, plants and animals, saving resources for humans. Um, but I would say looking at places through sound is really interesting because of what we spoke about earlier, that sound travels such huge distances. Um, like I've recorded the sounds of things that are happening 15 miles away from where I am. Um, so if you like think about like, if you're standing in the center of a circle and draw a 15 mile radius around you, like think about how much land that is. It's yeah. crazy. Um, and that's what we're talking about with sound. Like sound happens on such huge scales and also really small scales. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the main difficulty in finding naturally quiet places is uh, air traffic. And right behind air traffic is, uh, is you know, transportation noise from cars. Yeah. Um, and have you, have either of you ever looked at like a live air traffic map? Yes. Of, yes. Like, what's in the skies? Yes. Yeah. So I'd encourage the listeners, like you can find a live air traffic map, just go on and you're, it's like so shocking to see how many planes are in the sky at any yeah. given moment. It's like truly astonishing. Thousands and thousands of planes all over the world at all times. Mm -hmm. um, and if you think about how sound from a plane travels, I mean, like it's incredible. Yeah. Um, so I have spent uh, the better part of the last decade trying to find these places that are mostly free from noise pollution. Mm -hmm. um, we call them like quiet places, but it's important to know that like the Amazon jungle might not have any noise pollution, but it is a quiet place. There's no noise pollution, but mm -hmm. there's lots of birds, there's like insects. So it's not quiet in the way we think of like a music studio. Yeah. It's quiet in terms of like noise pollution. Um, so yeah, it's really difficult to find them. Um, because of air traffic, because of industrialization, because of how sound travels. Mm -hmm. um, but what we find is that sound, and when you look at a soundscape, it's a great indicator for the overall health of an environment. Yeah. So when you have a place that's mostly free from noise pollution, that same place is also free from air pollution and water pollution and soil contamination, because it means that there's not a lot of human activity in the area. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting to look at these places. Yeah. What ends up being quiet ends up being some of the last true wilderness areas or untouched pieces of nature we have all around the world. Yeah. And I, I mean, again, overlooked, like, you know, I, I don't think I would have ever thought like, you know, a place that's quiet, uh, or free from like a plane that's flying over, you know, which I, I'm, I'm hearing one right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Like that's not something that's going to indicate uh, the health of a, of a landscape. Yeah. I mean, and you can also look at like, um, sometimes if you look at like light pollution maps or like satellite imagery at night, you can see like population centers. Um, that's also a great indicator too. Yeah. Um, just because a place is quiet doesn't mean it's like environmentally super healthy or intact. But it is uh, definitely a, a factor. Mm -hmm. um, and as we're looking for these like beacons of conservation, you know, these like last real wilderness places, quiet is something that needs to be on our radar um, because it's easy to take a picture and you're only seeing what's through the lens of the camera. Yeah. But behind you could be a highway or like a bit, you know, anything. Um, yeah. With sound, you don't have that luxury. So getting a true nature sound recording, it like requires so, <laughs> so much work, which it's hard to understand um, without trying it. But 
we're surrounded by noise at all times. Yeah. Um, you know, like you just said, there's planes flying over, even like the sound of my computer humming. It's like, it's not horribly obnoxious, but it's a sound I'm exposed to all day. Yeah. Um, so we live in a noisy world. Um, and I think it's important that we have these quiet places, not just because animals and birds need it, um, to like be able to communicate effectively. Like they're using sound as a resource to like attract mates and get away from predators and find food and reproduce and find shelter. Yeah. But humans need this too, to be able to relax. Mm -hmm. um, like there's all these studies that are showing that noise increases our stress hormones. It increases our risk of like cardiovascular issues. Uh, children who experience noise pollution are like more likely to fall behind in school. Yeah. Um, so there's all these things telling us that like noise is a problem and the antidote to all these problems is quiet. We mm -hmm. all need quiet in order to just deal <laughs> with yeah. life, you know? There's a lot to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is very true. <laughs> Every yeah. day it seems like there's something new to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, like at the very least on on like some busy nights, like especially now that we're on our mock exams, like at night, I'm just I, I shut the window out, like no computer, like I no electronics whatsoever. And just like taking as much quiet as I can, because I, we live in the city, so it's not like we get a perfectly quiet place. Like I, I live like right down a highway, so that uh, those cars are constantly on that noise but once you get like a taste of that sweet quiet it's very hard to let go yeah it definitely is i applaud you for having the self control it's hard to like shut out technology and light and all these things um, it's not that hard it sometimes can get really annoying that's true <laughs> uh, like, yeah it's not yeah. like i'm, I'm like oh, I'm, I'm getting this addiction out it's like man everything's so overwhelming i, I need I need a second, and that's when totally. he just sees the message Quiet. like, "Hey, we need to work on the park." Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> get that first yeah. <laughs> airplane mode on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think what you just said is like, once you get a taste of quiet, you need it. Is so true. Um, people ask me like uh, all the time. I get asked like, "Why is quiet important?" Or why like why is listening important? Yeah. Um, and what I say is that when you hear what a naturally silent place sounds like, when you hear what it's like to not hear noise pollution, it becomes self-evident. Like, you know immediately why it's so important because it almost feels like, to me, it feels like a, a weight is like lifted off my shoulders and I can like breathe and just yeah. think and like all these things that matter don't matter and the things that don't matter do matter in the most beautiful and complex way um yeah. and that stuff i think only happens in quiet you know um mm -hmm. so i applaud you for find trying to find quiet and whatever that means for you like if that's your your bedroom with the the lights off and the doors closed and windows closed that's quiet and that's good and that's something that we should all try and seek like find your quiet place mm -hmm. in your home and go there um, yeah because it really like it reconnects you to everything i think yeah, and, and I also think that sometimes we we confuse like, oh, you know, I get eight hours of sleep, so that means I'm I'm resting my my brain and myself and kind of resetting and taking that break. But I, I do think there's a difference there with when you're falling asleep and you know doing that compared to when you just like okay, I'm gonna completely disappear from the world. It's just gonna be me breathing for like. You know, it can be two minutes <laughs> and that'll totally. do enough to kind of give you a little reset in, in your brain to a certain extent. Yeah, absolutely. You're so right. I think it's like not to uh, undermine the importance of a good night's sleep. Oh, yeah. It is very important. <laughs> we all know this. Um, but having intentional time where you're just being, you're like breathing or you're just laying down or, you know, uh, stuff like that's so important and yeah. like anyone who engages in stuff like that will tell you how beneficial it is mm -hmm. um, and yeah it could be two minutes like I think that's what's so important is sometimes we think about trying to be like like mindfulness is a term yeah. that's thrown around so much or like meditation and those are like scary words sometimes for people which is understandable mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be so formal just like sit and breathe yeah. like just like 
don't do anything for two weeks, <laughs> you know, yeah. like have no agenda. Um, that's what I think is like so powerful about listening because it can take you to that place really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you just sit in whatever room you're in right now and don't talk, don't have your phone out, like identify what you're hearing. It could be your computer whirring. There's a distant plane outside. A car just drove down my street. My friend is at the door knocking or something like all those things just kind of bring you to your current surroundings. And I think that's so important because we're constantly being pulled in all these directions, both by ourselves, by media, by the news. All these things are pulling, grabbing for our attention. Um, Being able to consciously direct your attention at something is so valuable. Yeah. Um, I heard from someone recently who works in like the tech uh, like tech world making apps and stuff they said that netflix's biggest competitor is sleep and i was like that is messed up yeah like that's, that's their biggest competitor is sleep <laughs> it's like even just thinking like Ugh. that I'm like whoa we need to take some stuff back <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, where, where are our priorities here totally. yeah i mean it's totally. it's because it's so easy to indulge into all these kinds of stuff like oh yeah i mean a new series in netflix came out not one episode at a time the whole thing is right there yeah. like each episode it's like manufactured to like hook you in right yeah. at the level like, ah, wh- one more and that's and, and also like and six hours later you're still there yeah. <laughs> like culturally it's also there to an extent you know like binge watching it has become <laughs> like a ritual of some sorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and people expect you to have watched, yeah, you know, exactly. like your friends the next day want to talk about what happened. Um, but I think it's like, I, I mean, I also binge Netflix too. Yeah. You know, I'm not like, I'm yeah, these not, not shaming on your one. Yeah, no, not, not, not at, at all. all. People assume that because I spend so much time in quiet, I'm like this enlightened being. <laughs> That's <laughs> bullshit. It's sorry. <laughs> like, we're all humans. Um, but I think what, being in quiet has the biggest gift that being in quiet has taught me is that I can spend a lot of time with myself yes, um, alone. Yeah. And that's something we don't get an opportunity for a lot because like we live in cities because there's all these things going on, but being able to just sit and be by yourself with no agenda is like a really great gift to give yourself. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty uncomfortable, I think to a lot of people, um, but as you do it more often, it becomes, I think, more and more uh, rewarding. And like, it's very much a part of what I need as a human. It's like time alone by myself. Um, I love friends. I love my family. I have a, a partner of nine years who I've lived with, and I love her immensely. And every once in a while, I'm like, I just need like to go sleep outside tonight by myself, yeah. you know, because that's important to me. Yeah. Um, and I think giving ourselves room to do that stuff is, is really important. Nothing's yeah. wrong. Like, no. it doesn't mean that something's wrong. I just need to be alone because I like being alone, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that kind of, you know, I'm curious to know, like, for you, I mean, how many people really get the opportunity to go to these, like, near uh, perfect landscapes where there isn't that noise pollution? Uh, for you, what like what is that experience like uh, being in the midst of like just a natural landscape, uh, mm-hmm. not necessarily even looking at like, you know, what people would probably imagine, like some polar bears fighting or something, <laughs> yeah. but just like birds chirping and, you know, these yep. small critters moving around. Like, what does that feel for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, for me. It's it kind of brings uh, like a childlike curiosity back to me. Um, Like whenever I'm in a place like that, it's I'm not really thinking about like, am I hungry? Am I sleepy? Do I need to drink water or anything like that? I'm just like in awe of the surroundings, which is, I think, what happens to a lot of us when we go to nature, like even just, just go for a hike or something like that, like you find yourself thinking less and less about stuff that doesn't really matter and more and more interested in what's happening around you. Um, and yeah, I think it's like the, the biggest privilege of my life is getting to spend time in these natural places. Yeah. Um, and to be able to call that work is just like, it's, I pinch myself. Um, 
but I think it's, yeah, it's, it doesn't feel like I'm, uh, doing anything necessarily even that special in the moment. I'm just like, this is where I am. I'm not even thinking about any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and being grounded in that way is like, it's, it's kind of like a drug. It really <laughs> is like you forget yeah. about everything else that's happening. Um, and hours and hours will pass while I'm sound recording and I will have no concept of time or like, yeah. you know, someone will like, I'll like catch up with someone later that day. Maybe if I have service or like, I'll, I'll be reminded like, Oh, I haven't eaten today. I need to eat <laughs> some food, you know, so I can like sustain this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like, it's magical. And that's how, again, everyone understands or should understand, hopefully understands what it's like to be in a place that like fills you with, uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what going to these places does for me. It's like, it inspires me to do everything and nothing all at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so, kind of like a surreal space. Yeah. A magic, totally. Basically. Yeah. But it's magic for sure. So far out of these quiet places that you've gone to, what's your favorite? And where is it at? Just <laughs> ask. Just... I, I don't know why. I just want to know. No, I'm not very secretive with these places because I think when I tell people about them, they're going to go and be quiet. Like, I'm not worried about you going to a place and like bringing your Bluetooth speaker and like blasting bad music. Making you know a podcast. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> blasting your podcast in the quiet place. Um, I think like I get asked this question all the time like what's your favorite place and it really changes for me all the time yeah. um but one of the places that i uh go to fairly often is uh, a national park called olympic national park in washington state um it's in the very most northwest corner of the united states like underneath british columbia mm -hmm. um and it's a place where i kind of like learn to listen learn to sound record Um, and I hadn't been back in like three years because of the pandemic. And I just got back from a trip from there last week. And it's like, I just, I go to that place and there's lots of little quiet places in that larger national park that I know about. Um, and it's always just like such an incredible experience for me. And it like feels very much like home, even though I've never lived there. Yeah. Um, but there's quiet places. What I'd say is like, the the line between like a wilderness quiet place and a regular quiet place are, are two very different things mm. there's lots of places you can go to experience natural quiet yeah but when i go with my like science mind to a place it needs to hit a certain criteria of how quiet it is yeah um but all over the world there are places where you can go and experience quiet it might just not be for these long stretches of time that mm -hmm. i'm really looking for Um, and so I encourage people like go to your local park, go on a hike on a weekend, yeah. um, because there is quiet to be had, um, and see what you find. And if you find a place that's super quiet, send me an email. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to know about it. I want to check it out. Um, but you know it when you feel it, you yeah. know, like just because some white guy in the United States says it's quiet, doesn't mean it has to be quiet. You know? <laughs> it doesn't say it's quiet. Like it's important that you can go to a place and if you have a quiet experience and you feel that weight being lifted off you, that's accomplishing the goal. Um, so yeah, don't let some like hairy white guy in the U S tell you what's quiet and what's not. That's bullshit. <laughs> you know? Like if it feels quiet, it's quiet and it should be, and you should hold it like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I can imagine like, I, I guess there's some scientific point to this, but I don't really know. I mean, to a certain extent, there must be like, a natural connection there like as a human just kind of craving for more a natural setting being in the trees like <laughs> breathing fresh air yeah. all of that well, that's like where we evolved you know yeah. what i mean like if you believe in ele evolution that means that like we have only started living inside houses in the past like I don't know, 60 years in some places, yeah. <laughs> you know, when we're millions of years into evolution. And for all of that time, we were in primitive shelters that were like much more connected to our outdoor environments. Yeah. This concept of like inside versus outside, I think has allowed us also to mistreat the planet in some really yeah. spectacular ways when it's like, yeah, I'm in a house right now, but like <laughs> 
distinguishing this the inside of this house from like outside of this house doesn't do me much good when yeah. the climate is ruined and I've polluted everything. Yeah. Because everything comes from from one place. When we just take a step outside and we try to breathe in some air and <laughs> you're you're trying to cough out some blood there. <laughs> totally. Or like I mean in California this this summer, uh and in, I mean lots of places in the United States we had fires that like people had to put uh air purification inside their houses. Oh. Even though the windows were closed. Oof. And in the middle of summer, windows closed. They had to put air purification inside their houses because the air levels were so, the uh, pollution was so bad that it's like unhealthy to breathe. Yeah. Um, but I think like overall, everyone spending more time outside is just like good for the heart. It's good for the soul. In the end, I think it's good for the planet because you connect more with nature. You understand how like taking care of planet's important i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? like how are you supposed to care for stuff that you've never experienced or yeah or don't yeah. spend time what's, in? what's about to say yeah like is yeah. this dissociation between like you and the planet it's like oh uh, this is my space so everything outside is really not my problem but once you start to realize like damn i live in the planet <laughs> yeah. maybe that's take some you scary care. stuff yeah i mean not For to sure. put uh too much blame on people because i i see this going around a lot it's like the blame that people have like oh it's your fault climate change is happening because you're there <laughs> sitting watching netflix like yeah. no i mean we, we already saw what happens when the entire planet uh, stops going outside using their cars and the national like the international pollution went down like 0.2 and we need to go like by 15 <laughs> to not die yeah but yeah just a, a little tangent there so don't yeah. blame no, yourself I, for anything totally. i think yeah people blame each other way too much for stuff not saying that like i think collective power is a real thing yeah we have a responsibility um, and if we all do a little i think it can go a long yes. way yeah. but yeah like watching netflix or like eating a cheeseburger once a week is not gonna be yeah. the end all you yeah. know um not saying that those things aren't worth talking about sure we can talk about them but like yeah i'm not gonna single-handedly stop anything by like yeah, me just... personally driving only a hybrid car or like only eating soybeans you know <laughs> all those things can help in moderation um and i think we can all do a little bit more yeah. but like I think we all know who's like the, yeah i think most of the, the destruction on the planet is not caused by individuals it's caused by corporations and governments who have been allowed to just like ruthlessly totally contaminate every square inch of our environments to extract resources and make more money yeah um it, there's my tangent it's definitely so... not jeff's fault down the street it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's probably yeah. more likely to be adidas <laughs> yeah exactly um and yeah, and it doesn't mean that we can't all be motivated to like do our part and try and help. Um, but it's all like, we can all only do so much too. Um, yeah. You know, like I do a lot of work in conservation and ecology. I also drive an SUV, like a four wheel drive vehicle to get to these places. Yeah. Um, and I like fly on planes and do all this stuff. So it's like, I try not to beat myself up too much. Yeah, of course. Um, because there's like a balance, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, just because I drive a gas guzzling car doesn't mean I'm like a wholly bad person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will buy an electric truck when I can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's a limit, right? Like, there's a limit to where you can be like just biologically conscious of your environment. Like, if you have a trip, a business trip, let's not even say like a vacation, sometimes you will have to go by plane. Yeah. Like, uh, and you have to be okay with it. Like, no, yes, the the entire airplane industry is the most contaminated industry, like ever. Uh, well, that's uh, not that's not true. Don't don't fact me a check that because I, I know that, so. even rice yeah. is worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's true. It's like I, all the time. It's like, wait, should I just not do anything? It's like, and that's the, I mean. Again, I think there's moderation where it's like, if you were to fly your private jet, maybe like, let's <laughs> take it back a step. Like, yeah. okay, if you're gonna fly commercial, what can you do? Like now even like Google is showing you your carbon footprint when you go to buy a plane yeah. ticket, which is new in the past 
year or two. Yeah. So like, I think we're starting to bring some of these concepts more into the mainstream. Like it's not only like people who care about noise pollution, like me, <laughs> who are looking at their carbon footprint. It's like, yeah. you want to go buy a plane ticket, you're going to know. And even if you're not inclined to like offset your carbon footprint or try and find a flight with less carbon footprint, at least like that stuff is coming into the mainstream a little bit more for yeah. people. So it becomes less of like a weird, obscure conversation. Like I remember, I mean, here in the United States, we like deal with people and all over the world who like don't believe climate change is real. Oh, yeah. And like, I remember as a kid, even like my parents who are like fairly liberal, up to date folks being like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. And now we know like very undoubtedly that like, yes, this is real. There's all this science, all this stuff. It's still hard for people to swallow, I think, because it feels new to them. Like if you're yeah. 60 or 70 years old, you're like, whoa, pump the brakes. This is new for my, most of my life and probably all of your life. Like climate change has very much been something yeah. we've talked about yeah. and known about. Um, so it's easier for us to be like, fuck your private plane. What are you talking <laughs> about? We got a planet to save. Yeah, and Jeff yeah. Bezos is like, what do you mean? <laughs> so I think it's like... You know, I think I have a lot of hope, especially when I talk to young people like you, even though I'm also a young person. Uh, it's just like, yeah, there's such a bright future yeah. ahead of us. It's easy to like get caught up in all the bad stuff that's happening. And there is tons of it. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But um, yeah, there's I think there's a lot of a lot of positive stuff happening, you know, and we're all very much aligned in what we need to do. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. We, we've seen that a lot through the podcast. Just, I mean, talking with people like you, it, it brings us like, oh, wow, there's a lot of fields and a lot of people working towards something. Uh, totally. So, you know, don't lose hope, listener. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because once we lose hope, we lose inspiration, you know, yeah. like and that's, as yeah. soon as you give up hope, there's no reason. Why would I why would we even be talking right now? Yeah. Um, and that's especially over the past three years, like you I have so much admiration for your generation because like you guys have been through some shit like <laughs> holy crap i'm like so proud that you guys are like have hope and are doing this work um it's not that not hard saying that like we <laughs> haven't seen you know like my generation has seen some shit too yeah. don't get me wrong but it's like having hope is what we need because without hope we lose the ability to do anything like why even get up in the morning yeah i, I mean w w even so like it's not like we are living through those harsh moments i think that the harshest like global thing we've been through it's like just covid and yeah. even like we hear things about ukraine like oh no well that's on the other side of the planet like mm -hmm. we we don't it's again that uh dissociation from actual problems because they're yeah not in your face so yeah. again that that's the the good stuff about like google giving you the, the your cover footprint like making people actually notice what's happening or they like it or not because i was thinking like uh oh, maybe maybe guilt tripping people about their current footprint for an airplane ticket is not the best idea but then you start to think it's like these people maybe they don't even hear about no. it yeah like the, yeah. The, their whole media is not tailored for them to tolerate talk about environment so when mm. once you take something so crucial as an airplane ticket and not even force it just like have it there and people yeah. notice like oh man damn <laughs> totally. that, that, it can just be something like oh that's that's interesting i didn't know that and yeah it spirals mm -hmm. i think too what we've seen especially like I mean, America politically for the past six to eight years has been a crazy shit show. <laughs> but like what we've seen is like technology companies, there's a lot of bad, a lot, a lot of bad. Yes. Don't get me wrong. And in some ways they can step in where government can't, mm -hmm. um, which is also bad. But in some ways it's like been really interesting to see the changes that these tech companies have been able to bring around to the mainstream when it aligns with their priorities and their yeah. ideals. Um, even like when we're looking at Ukraine and what's happening with the technology in Russia and all this stuff, it's like stuff that the government has no power to do. Google and Apple are like, we can do this, like no yeah. problem, which is like in some ways kind of, it's scary as hell, but it's like kind of cool in some ways. I don't know. Very confusing. <laughs> um, yeah. I have really let us down a very deep hole. I feel like yeah. this background <laughs> is like 
driving me into we the... have just we have just we have gone with the void <laughs> yeah i'm sorry if i've brought this whole thing totally nah down. that's oh, no. what we're all about so I, yeah. I think getting another perspective such a unique perspective because i don't think we'll ever get a guest like you uh, i think it's very cool for the podcast and, and in a good way yeah in a good way i don't it's think it's only one <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah. Here in the Creekcast, we have a tradition of the final three questions being like the big three. That's what we call them. So, Masa, if you would do the honors of the first question. Of course. Uh, so, starting off with who is the person that inspired you most? Um, it can be either professional or personal or in both, however you wish. Whoa. That is a, that's a big one. And there's two more? <laughs> yeah, no, no, there's two more. Person that inspires me most. Um Wow. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy question. I I mean I, I'm struggling to think of one because I feel like I've been super lucky to have a lot of very inspirational people in my life. Um professionally Um, I owe a lot of my success to my mentor, whose name is Gordon Hempton. He's very well known in the acoustic ecology sound recording world. Um, and when I was like 18 years old, I sent him an email and I was like, what you do sounds really cool. And he like <laughs> took me under his wing and like really helped me develop a profession out of yeah. this. Um, so professionally, I'd say he's definitely like, I have a lot, uh, owe a lot to him. Um, Personally, I think I see um, my family as really big sources of inspiration. Yeah. Um, I think we all, you know, yeah, a lot of us do. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm gonna have to call back in for that one. Okay, we'll have to have you back for another episode. All I guess. right. It's well, deal. It's written now. It's now I'm nervous <laughs> for number two. <laughs> so. Uh, for number two, I don't think it's, it's that deep. The, the third one is the, the harsher one. But what's your three future goals, like per, either personal or professional? Mm. Yeah, all my all my goals. I'll talk about our personal because I love what I do for yeah. uh, my job, for sure. It's like absolutely, I feel so blessed, um, and. I, my personal and my professional life are kind of one thing I like to look at. I try not to separate them too much because if I'm unhappy in my professional life, I'll be unhappy in my personal life. So these are all personal goals. Uh, one is um, I want to like own a pretty ch a nice chunk of land one day yeah. to raise a family on. Um, and I want to take care of that land really well and like help restore it you know yeah. plant trees remove uh you know bad species whatever but i want to like own some land and a tractor that's like been my goal <laughs> since i was a kid is to like have some land and a tractor maybe like a solar powered tractor or something oh yeah. that would be cool yeah it'd be super sweet um two would be um Man, that's like all I really want. Like, <laughs> piece of land. I could break that into three things. I could go like a piece of land that I help restore, uh, a family. I'm really excited to have a family one day. It's not yeah. the right time for me, um, but like I am excited to have kids um, one day. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think like overall, I want I want to have a close family. Like one of my really big personal goals is to have a close family where we like all want to spend time together. Yeah. Um, and try to spend as much time together as possible. Um, and I cool also truck. kind of want a motorcycle one day. Just gonna throw oh. that out there. It's oh, like one of my cool. weird goals. There you go. I don't know if it's a goal as much as like a guilty, <laughs> a guilty pleasure. It doesn't have, have to be want, guilty. I want like. A BMW GS like adventure motorcycle. There we go. That's top of the list of the goals we've heard on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Damn. I don't know why. Again, that... it's a weird thing. I like yes, I protect nature sounds, but I also want a motorcycle. <laughs> now now I really know, want a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, a tractor I, and a motorcycle. Yeah, a, a tractor, just a tractor <laughs> around. That would be cool. Hey, okay, <laughs> now on to the final question, the biggest one of them all. Uh, what mark do you want to leave in this world? A quiet one. 
Oh. Or one that brings about quiet. Yeah. Like I want people to hear about my work or hear my work itself and feel quiet on the inside. I think that's the best answer we've had so far. <laughs> Because you answered that like that came from the damn, heart too. Yeah, yeah. you can I, tell like, it was quick. I really felt it. That's gonna be the quote. <laughs> yeah, that's that's gonna be the quote. Go. That's gonna be the name of the episode. Ooh, damn. a quiet one. Nice. I like it. Okay. Oh, well, like it. Uh, thank you so much for coming yeah. on here. It has been wonderful. Uh, Insightful. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank Out you guys. It has been a true pleasure. Um, I love talking with folks like you so like anything you need you let me know consider me your like resident audio specialist if you have like problems or there's like something weird happening in your edit like hit me up like i'm here i'm part okay. of the cast crew oh, oh hell man. yeah we're sending you a I'm self self-appointed but you know <laughs> hey, you need me feel on. free feel free feel free seriously yeah. let me know like i'm i'm game to help in any way i can thanks so much matt i mean Thank it's so been much. a pleasure Totally. Yeah. Let me know when this goes live. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Perfect. So, uh, dear listener, thank you so much for staying tuned so long. Uh, remember, here's our YouTube, our Instagram, and TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode. See, see you in the, the void. void.